Rosie, I've always been fascinated when uh, actors are on airplanes and they see their films on the plane. Now, how do you react when they announce that your film was going to be the in-flight movie? Well, that's funny because um, one time I was, on, I was on MGM Grand Ale, right? So on that airline, they don't censor any of the movies they show. And they were like, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we'll be watching White Man Can't Jump. And then you hear in the, in the midst of silence, I went, oh, my God. <laughs> like, everyone's going to see me naked. <laughs> and I said, bye. And I was, like, begging for this. Can I move to the cabin, please? Please, I'll pay you $100. <laughs> and this man sitting next to me going, you're great. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> it was really bad. I was so embarrassed. And then I'm walking off the plane, and all the male stewards are going like this. Nice line, Michelle. <laughs> like a pig. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that was baby. Okay. That was a great story. I love that. Uh, well, let's go back to uh, do the right thing for a second. Would you have been satisfied if, like, coming out of that, did you expect more movie offers to come, or did you think that movie acting was going to be a one-time thing for you? Initially, I thought it was going to be a one-time thing for me. And then a lot of people in Hollywood tried to, like, soup my head up and started saying, oh, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do this. And I'm like, really? Really? And then I started to believe the hype, and nothing came. <laughs> Like for a whole year was nothing, <laughs> you know, and um, <laughs> and so then I uh, HBO finally took a chance on me, and did this film Criminal Justice, okay. uh, with uh, Forrest Whitaker and everything, and then during that film, Jennifer Grey introduced me to uh, a new agent, who's mm -hmm. my agent now, James, and then things took off after Criminal Justice, things took off, but it was a year, almost like a year and a half after Do the Right Thing, there was nothing. Were you very discouraged during that time at all? Yes and no. Yes, because it's like, it taught me a good lesson not to believe the hype, you know, about anything. And, um, but no, because I had other things in my life. I, you know, still going to school, I was still working, I was still dancing, and I was still doing the choreography. So my life was pretty full anyway. So I, it's not like it was me sitting around twiddling my thumbs waiting. Yeah. Well, speaking of your, your music and dance career, I read in the press notes that you had worked with Diana Ross. Now, when you worked with her, was that something at a whole new level for you? Were you intimidated at all going into that? You know, it's funny with me. Initially, I was like, wow, Diana Ross and everything like that. But usually I'm not intimidated by anybody once I meet them. It, you have to really strike me hard for me to be intimidated by you. There's a few people. But once I met her, I met her daughters first. And I think that that's what put me at her ease because her daughters are really nice. And then when I met her, I wasn't intimidated. I was impressed. She had everybody under a whip. She knew exactly what she wanted. And she was like, I want this. I want it now. And she did it in a very quiet voice and just a look. And everything, and I was like, you know something? Let me be that woman in, in <laughs> 20 years, you know what I'm saying? Because it's nice to see, because working in the music industry, you see a lot of recording artists be manipulated by their record companies and by their managers. And by all means, that woman was not manipulated by anybody. You know, she was calling the shots. That's why they call her the boss. Now, with uh, It Could Happen to You, uh, the shower scene, I was looking at that scene, I noticed the water was actually running. It wasn't just sound effects. Now tell me about that scene and how awkward was that for you? It was you? very awkward because they have a steam pipe blasting at my feet, right? So it's kind of burning my skull. I'm like, I think it's burning my skin, right? And Andy's going, then move, right? <laughs> you know? And then the water's cold. The steam is hot and the water's cold. And like, I never remember my lines. And so Andy didn't know it. I had taped my lines on the tile of the bathroom behind oh. the curtain. So let's say I, I'm on this end of the shower and I would go, blah, blah, blah. I walk, I have to walk and get to the other side and go, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> blah, 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 right? <laughs> like this, and then what happened? Because of the steam, the papers came off the tile because I had taped them on the tile and the sound man's going, I hear something, I hear something. <laughs> the AD goes back to call, she has her life! <laughs> you know, and it was really funny. And we were just dying laughing and Andy's like, I don't believe you. And I was like, sorry, but that was, technically that was difficult. And, and one really quick question, this movie is about winning things. What's the most 
you've ever won or the biggest prize you've ever won in any kind of contest? The biggest prize I ever won was $10 from a Kentucky Fried Chicken scratch off. <laughs> <laughs> I 